this video we are going to show the process to start up an Ingecon Sun Storage OnePlay TLM using a mobile device that could be either a smartphone or a tablet. To do so, the first thing we have to do is to connect all the energy sources to the inverter, such as photovoltaic panels, batteries, etc., as well as all communication accessories. We are not going to show that part of the process that is explained in the manual, and we are going to focus on the actual startup process. The next thing we should do is to install the Ingecon Sun Monitor application in our mobile device. We need to open it and click on this small icon that appears in the bottom right part of the screen. Both in the application for Android and for iOS, we find an option to scan the QR code of the inverter that will simplify the process. The QR code can be found on one side of the inverter. We will scan it with our mobile device and that will give us access to the equipment's Wi-Fi network. When our mobile device connects to the inverter, the first screen that appears is to select the language we are going to use in the process. There is another way to connect to the inverter apart from the QR code, which is the use of the device ID that appears on the right side of the sticker. This process varies depending on whether the mobile device that we are going to use to access the inverter has Android or iOS. The first of the cases we are going to show is the one that corresponds to devices with Android. As we can see, in addition to the QR code option, a list with all the Wi-Fi networks appears, among which we find the one generated by the inverter itself. If we select it, the smartphone device will take a few seconds to get connected. Once connected, we will have access to the equipment configuration screen. Now we are going to show the same functionality for iOS. We will select the icon that appears in the lower right part and then follow the instructions on the screen where the process to connect to the Wi-Fi network generated by the Ingecon Sun Storage OnePlay TLM is explained. When we access the configuration screen, the first thing we must do is to select the language and then we click on continue. The application will ask us to create an installer level user for this inverter. We select a username and a password and then we click on accept. We are starting with the actual commissioning. The first thing is to select the operating mode. In this case, and as an example, we are going to select self-consumption. We will click on continue and then the application will ask us if we want to add a battery to our system. As the electrical connection of the battery has already been made, the next step is to select the type of battery that we have connected to our inverter. Then we click on Next and the application will ask us to select the grid code to which the inverter is going to get connected. We can also select the nominal voltage and the frequency of the grid and the grounding mode. When we move forward to the next screen, the application will request data from our AC contract. First, we input the contracted power of our installation. Let's imagine that, for example, we have 3.4 kilowatts contracted. Then the application will ask us if we are allowed to inject any surplus into the grid. Imagine that in our case, surplus injection is allowed. The next parameter is to indicate how much photovoltaic power is allowed to be injected into that grid. 
we will input that value and the next of the parameters to select is whether we allow the batteries to get charged from the electrical grid. In this case, we are going to select that option and we are going to allow the batteries to get charged from the grid from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. The next parameter, shock rate, corresponds to the state of charge that the batteries can reach with power from the grid. We click on continue and the application will ask for several parameters related to the battery state of charge that define the self-consumption strategy. Some default values appear, but these can be modified to suit your needs. An explanation for each of those parameters, suck max, suck recovery, suck mean, etc., can be found. Those definitions can be complemented with the information included in the installation manual. The last option allows us to select the activation of the backup function to keep feeding our critical loads when there is a power outage. If we activate this option, we must define the following two parameters also explained in the inverter installation manual. The next step requested by the application is to select a power meter. If we have an external power meter, click on the re-scan option and we will automatically find it. Another option is not to use an external power meter and to use the inverter internal one. Click on continue and the application shows a summary of the configuration that has been selected. If we agree with it, we accept it and the inverter will get configured. The next step in the commissioning is the communication setup. The first suggestion that the application makes is to secure the inverter's Wi-Fi network. To do so, we must select a password for the unit. In Getium, recommends the use of ingeconsan as a password, although installers could change it and select any other one. The next parameter is the configuration of the date, time, time zone, and the location where the inverter is going to be installed. By default, it will take that information from the smartphone. The next step requested by the application is to indicate if we want the inverter to get connected to an existing network, that is, to an external router. There are several ways to connect our equipment to a router. It could be via cable, for which we will select the Ethernet option. It might be via Wi-Fi, or it could be the case that there is no router, and therefore we cannot connect that inverter to the Internet. In our example, we are going to connect via Wi-Fi. I choose that option, and the next step is to select which Wi-Fi network I want to connect to. In the SSID tab, all the available Wi-Fi networks will appear. I will choose the one I want, and then the application will ask me for the password. From that moment, that inverter will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network that we have selected. When the inverter is connected to that Wi-Fi network, the blue LED will stop flashing and will light constantly. The following screen is the final one, where we will accept the configuration process. Once the inverter is configured, the next time we try to access it, the application will ask us for the installer user and password that we have previously configured. When we indicate these two values, we get access to the inverter display. In addition to allowing us to monitor the equipment in real time, there are other options that the application allows us to perform. As an example, we are going to create a new user with a basic level. For this, we will access the Communications tab and then the Users menu. As we can see, there is already a user, the one I'm using right now, with an installer level, and we are going to add another one with a basic level. We should indicate its name and password. Next, we will select the level of access and the language, and then we'll click on OK. As we can see, we have created a new user. 